Hey friends, I think I'm live. Let's see. I'm just gonna check my phone. I am live. Hello everyone. If you are just hopping on, why don't you say hello? And if you are watching the replay after the fact, you know, you can just go ahead, jump ahead and fast forward a few minutes and then we will jump into some tips uh, for handling Thanksgiving. I'm just gonna wait to see who hop hops on. Like I said, if you are here, please drop me a hey, hi, hello, howdy, whatever you want in the comment section and we will get started in just a few minutes. Gonna make sure I am all set up on my end. It is a very sunny day here in Brisbane, Australia. And if you're like, what the heck, she's in Australia? Don't worry, I'll explain. If you are just hopping on, please send me a hello in the comments. And also, why don't you let me know where you are tuning in from? Um, I'm assuming most of you are in Canada as this is a live regarding, you know, Thanksgiving, which for Canadians is happening on Monday. Uh, like I said, I'm here in Australia uh, and I'm here for the year, but you best believe I'm going to be making a Thanksgiving dinner for my crew over here um, on Sunday. So I'm just going to check the comments. We'll see who's here and then we'll keep going. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Miranda. Hi. Howdy. <laughs> Hey, Brandy. Hey, Carol. Hi, beautiful. Oh, thanks, Brandy. Carol, you're tuning in from Edmonton. Stephanie, you are tuning in from Eston, Saskatchewan. Awesome. This is great. We're just going to wait like a couple more minutes for to let people kind of pop on. This is the first time that I've ever done a live in this group. So I realize people might be figuring out either how to get into this group to either tune in, they're figuring out how to tune in live, um, or they may be seeing notifications for this live and being like, what on earth is going on in that group? So we will just give um, those people a couple seconds to jump on. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Denise. Saskatchewan, we've got some Saskatchewan and Alberta, which is awesome. Um, one thing to mention, you know, before I get started is if you are new to this group or if you are a member from like way back because this group has been around for a while, I encourage you to engage, you know, comment, ask questions, give me feedback. The more energy you bring, the more energy I can bring and it, it will just open doors of possibility for what this group can offer. You know, I have ideas for challenges, I have ideas for more lives. So if you're here, um, whether for the live or for the replay, please do not be shy. Uh, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Um, I will continuously be checking back into the comments from time to time and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I've had a few leading up to this live, which I will address at the end. So while we just wait for a couple more people to pop on, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen um, and then we will get started. Okay, so just give me a sec here. Now you all should be able to see this. Give me a big old thumbs up if that is the case. See it on my end, but I wanna make sure that you can see it also. Okay, looks good, I think. Make sure to tell me. I can see it looks a little funky on my end. I just wanna make sure that we have it right um, beforehand. So I just, I just wanna make sure. It looks like a weird little strip right now. So tell me if that's the case for you. It's gone now. Is it in the picture now? We'll see, there's always a bit of a lag with the live. Ooh, it's looking more promising. Okay. Just give me a sec here. I just wanna make sure that we have this before. Okay, 
We looking good now. Yes, it is now. Yes, it's good. Beautiful. If for whatever reason that changes, just let me know. Okay. So today's topic, it's tips for handling indulgent holidays like Thanksgiving happily. Um, so you can let me know in the chat, you know, do you have a big Thanksgiving planned? Uh, will you be seeing family or friends, you know, granted the way the world is right now and all of its coronavirus chaos, you know, maybe you'll be having more of a quiet holiday this year. Let me know, you know, I'd love to get a feel for who's here and what this weekend is going to look like um, for everyone. So let me know in the comments. We'll see what people are up to this weekend. Give it a few minutes. I've seen a few other people pop on, which is awesome. What are you guys doing? Penny, you are having a small family get together, just five of us. Carol is going to a friend's home locally. Denise has a big dinner planned. Sounds pretty great. I'll wait for a few more of those to come in. Now, I know how valuable your time is, which is why today I'm only going to be focusing on three tips. I'll be expanding on how by using them, you're going to be set up for success this holiday weekend. Also, it is exciting to mention now, but if you have not already seen this or had access to it, I also have a Thanksgiving cheat sheet to go along with this live that's going to include an additional five tips. So you're going to get eight strategies to help you navigate Thanksgiving with confidence this weekend. Um, so if you are new to this group, uh, you might have already seen this go to your inbox. If not, though, I will provide the link at the end so that you can go ahead and get that strategy. Wendy says, small gathering, big dinner. Sounds about right to uh, what I am doing as well. Stephanie Mills is just us five. So this sounds really good, guys. Cool. I'll read some more of those as those come in. Okay, let's keep things moving. So like I said, I'm gonna be sharing three tips today and I will have that freebie for you guys that includes five additional tips. So if you really find today valuable, I encourage you to go ahead and check out the additional five tips. It's just a really quick, uh, cheat sheet and I will post that for you guys at the end of this live. Okay, um, so let's keep moving. Now forgive me for a little bit of housekeeping here. You know, if we've worked together one-on-one -on -one before, you would already know who I am. But for some of you, you might not be familiar exactly with who I am or what I do. So hello if we have not met yet. Uh, in case we are new friends, my name is Jen. I am fiercely independent, a dreamer, and a bit of a type A perfectionist. I like to say I'm a perfectionist in recovery. I'm trying to move away from that. Uh, I'm originally from Edmonton, Alberta, but I am currently living in Brisbane, Australia. My boyfriend is Australian, and we had done three and a half years of long distance prior to me coming to Australia. So now at least we are in the same country, which is nice, especially considering this year. Um, as well, I have been a type 1 diabetic for 13 years. It will be 14 uh, next week, actually, 14 years next week. My passion, however, is helping women make empowering decisions and pursue confident lives with both fitness, nutrition, and mindset coaching, additionally. And I've been pursuing this passion, you know, encouraging women to success for the last seven years. So that is a little bit on who I am, just in case you didn't know. Now, I think it's important to have a little bit of context as to why this live is important and why in some ways, you know, I'm sure you're here tuning in. Uh, a few years ago, I found myself in a, literally a very uncomfortable situation. You know, it was that post Thanksgiving food coma that we all know too well, except it was notched up in intensity about tenfold. You know, I had battled myself the entire evening and I can remember this so clearly. I had battled myself the entire evening and I had eaten myself sick. Uh, my stomach, it felt like a physical rock. It just didn't feel like it wanted to move or do anything. And I can remember even finding it hard to breathe. Um, and while this was happening, I remember asking myself, like, what am I doing? Do I have absolutely no control over myself? But I think the truth is in reflection, the reason I had such a hard time with Thanksgiving was because the more I told myself, no, Jen, you can't have that, the more my actions responded in rebellion saying, you know what, oh yeah, just watch me. Um, and I wonder for you guys, like, have you had similar experiences? Have you felt discouraged, self-critical, or hopeless during holiday celebrations, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever, despite your best intentions going into that? 
Um, you know, if you're comfortable, why don't you share with me in the comments and share with the group with a simple yes. Like, have you felt this? Can you relate to this? Um, we'll give you guys a couple seconds. I'll give you guys a couple seconds just to respond with that. Um, see what you guys think there. Let's see. Brandy says yes. Denise says yes. Penny says yes. Carol says yes. We've got a theme here. That should be a little bit of comfort too in the fact that you're not alone. Stephanie Mills says, I always want to keep eating. I understand this. I totally get it. Okay, so it sounds like there definitely is some consistency here just in terms of, you know, um, everyone feels this. Okay. Yep, Miranda said, okay. I just want to remind you guys, I mean, answers are still coming in. I just want to remind you that there is hope beyond this. There are ways to approach Thanksgiving so that you never feel defeated again. Um, I truly want to, I, I truly want you to stress less about what and how you eat. I want you to feel confident in the choices you make. And I want you to instead give your energy to what matters most during the holidays, which is spending quality time with those you love. So it is important to remember that I am right here with you. What you are feeling, I have felt before. I get those emotions. I have been right there. And you know, in time, I was able to figure out exactly how to approach the holidays with the right mindset, one that empowers me instead of bullies me. And with practice, you know, I've discovered simple strategies that help support and encourage my goals, but don't leave me burdened by rigid rules or restrict restrictions. And the truth is, I want that for you. I want the same for you. So that is my encouragement um, in that regard. Now, why don't we jump into the first tip, okay? My first tip for you guys, and it might seem super simple, but is to bring something or make something that you are happy with. It's understandable to feel overwhelmed by a ton of options. You know, you see a bunch of different things and you respond reactively. It's just in our nature, you know, if you feel flustered or unsure, we're gonna be more likely to make choices that later, you know, we may not be happy with. Um, so if you are responsible for bringing something, say it's like a potluck, if you are making the food yourself or if you're making the food yourself, you know, bring something you know you are really happy to eat something that is healthy and most definitely yummy. This way, it's a simple way that you can feel a bit more in control about what you eat when it comes time to load up. This, it guarantees a safe option so that you don't have to think about it in the moment. And it allows you the time and space to proactively make some good decisions that align with your goals and intentions. So really simple, but it allows you to think outside of the temptation, if that makes sense. And you know what, if you're worried that you're gonna offend someone by bringing something, say for example, if you are going to be the guest, someone's invited you over to their home, there are ways to phrase and position yourself so hopefully it isn't taken that way. So you know, just an example, saying something like, hey, would I be able to take a little bit of the load off of your plate? You know, I'd love to bring something to the meal. I'd love to bring an addition. Or another example might be, you know, can I add to this wonderful meal that you're going to be providing? There's this awesome recipe that I've been wanting to try and share, and this seems like it would be the perfect opportunity. Um, and so can you see just from those examples how that changes the tone and it changes the intention? You know, it becomes more about helping than being selfish with your own intentions, even if in a small sense that is the case. Okay. What are your thoughts on this tip? Let me know, have you ever tried this before? Um, this weekend, would this option work for you? If it does, you know, what would you bring? Let me know in the comments. Let's create a discussion about this, guys, before I move on. Let me know. Give you guys a second. Denise says, such a good idea. I'm glad you think so. I feel like there's a little mouse oh, okay. on my screen. I can see it on the live, but it's fine. Let me know, is this a tip realistic for you guys? Such a good idea. How does it work if you are cooking the food? 
Uh, Brandy, that's a great question. Um, so you may not need to make all of the options be totally safe and healthy. I mean, you'll be cooking for other people as well. So maybe you make all of your regulars, but then you have an option that in the back of your head, you know, is that safe option or that's a healthy go-to for you. Um, that's even almost more to your advantage because you are in control of the menu. So yes, you can still make all the foods that you love, that you know the people that are coming love, but maybe you'll be able to interject a few options that you know are healthy and yummy that can kind of be at your aid um, when you need them on the day of. Carol says, yes, I just had this conversation with someone and they were more than happy to let me bring something. Awesome, so that's a great successful example. Uh, Wendy said, such a great idea, maybe some beautiful salad. Yeah, awesome. Penny, I like it and we often do potluck, but this year we are taking the turkey. Okay, so that's great. Turkey. That's a pretty big job. So maybe you're content with that or maybe you feel like you can add something else small. Denise said Thanksgiving is the perfect time for big colorful fall salad. Yes, absolutely. And that just adds a good benefit to any meal, right? So that's awesome. Well, let's move on to the second tip. Okay, the second tip here is to socialize away from the snack table. You know, whether you are visiting family and friends or you are hosting the holiday festivities, intentionally position yourself away from the snack table. You know, you may not be able to control all of the food available or the options present, but you yourself, you are in control of where you are in a room. This is a really easy way to prevent yourself from snacking mindlessly or feeling tempted, you know, to fill the gaps of conversation with extra treats. Um, if you know there are going to be temptations, make it less convenient to get to them. So when you arrive or when you are setting up your home, you know, do a loop, assess where the food, the snacks, the appetizers, whatever are going to be placed and find an area that makes it less convenient for you to get to that spot. If you know you're gonna have a bigger meal, don't necessarily position yourself to be at an even greater disadvantage by sitting right next to something that is appetizing, that is available, and not even portioned up, meaning you never really know how much you are having. Another, this is kind of like a mini tip within a tip, but do not rely on willpower. Um, if you do, I can almost guarantee you will either let it go out the window or you're gonna mentally battle yourself the whole time instead of just being present with the people who are around you, okay? Socialize away from the snack table. This can be even, in the context of, you know, say you have a, like a couch setting with a coffee table and that's where the snacks are, position yourself at the furthest couch or the furthest chair away. Because then if there's a group of people, every time you wanna go snack, you literally have to cross the room, which that becomes a little bit like, like inconvenient or a little awkward. So you're already positioning yourself in a place where it makes it difficult to have just like complete access to those um, snacks and appetizers. So let me know. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this tip. I have done this before and, you know, it may initially seem challenging, but if you go in with intention, if you go in with a game plan, it really does work. Um, have you ever tried this? Will you try it? Uh, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Makes sense. I'm seeing some thumbs up and some hearts. Let me know what you guys think about this tip. We'll see what you guys think. And we'll move on to the third and final tip for today. Makes sense, Brandy. We'll try this, Wendy. Awesome. I just, um, this was not for a holiday event, but I just used this tip um, this past weekend, we went away for the weekend. There was lot, there was this massive like charcuterie board, lots of cheese and meats and everything. And I intentionally put myself at a place where if I wanted those treats, I was going to have to get up in front of everyone who was having conversations and walk myself over there. So yes, I still took the opportunity to go over and get snacks, but it was less frequent than if, you know, the chip bowl was right in front of me. So that's what we're just trying to do. We're trying to create a little bit of some room where you kind of have to work for it. So then maybe you're less inclined to do so. Penny said, 
OMG, such a good tip. It's usually a prime place to be, but I can see the advantage now if not standing right there. Yes, absolutely. And I would argue too, that if you're not right there where you're not visually seeing it, where you're not staring at it, you're probably gonna forget about it also, which means you're gonna be more invested in what's going on around you with the people, with the conversations that you're ha having. So awesome, Penny, I'm glad that was helpful. Carol said, very true about positioning myself away from the food. Kathy said, great tip. Awesome guys, I am glad this is hitting the right spot. So let's move on to that third and final tip. Please, if you have any other comments, feel free to add them. We wanna hear from you. The third tip, okay? I've saved the best for last for you guys. My final tip, and this, if you really let sink in, I, can, I believe can have the biggest impact. And that is to give yourself permission to enjoy. I know that probably sounds a bit counterintuitive, but let me explain here. You know what leads to a really big binge? To a full on eating extravaganza, blow out, eat everything and anything until you feel sick? You wanna know what leads to that? Telling yourself no, telling yourself you can't, telling yourself you shouldn't, telling yourself you won't. Thanksgiving, it happens once a year. It's better to enjoy the treats, honor your body and trust that it's gonna tell you when it's satisfied. Let everything be available so that you don't feel the intensity to rebel and have foods that you perceive as off limits. Go enjoy your family and friends. You know, if all you do is stress about what you can't have, you'll be so in your head, and I'm speaking because I have been there, that you'll miss out on the holiday and the time with family completely. It is okay and acceptable to enjoy special treats, moments, and holidays exactly as they are. The more you allow yourself to enjoy the moment for everything that it offers, the easier it will be for you to find peace, comfort, and satisfaction within it. Okay, that's the best one I have. This one may be hard for a lot of people, but I am curious to know what you think. When I finally got this and I accepted this in my own heart, in my own head, something, it shifted. You know, I can remember I enjoyed games with family and I, I wasn't thinking about food. You know, I come dessert, I'd leave half a plate of pie because although I knew it was available, I was satisfied and okay to leave it behind. It wasn't something that was off limits to me. I didn't feel like I was missing out. Um, do you think you could benefit from this mind shift, guys? Uh, let me know in the comments how this tip might um, influence you, how it might benefit you. But let me know. Brandy said, interesting. Yes, very counterintuitive. But I wonder if you let yourself, you know, if you walk into a situation and you say, I can have whatever I want here, but I want to respect myself with what I'm, what my preferences are. So I'm actually going to listen to what I want. I'm not just going to fill up on the stuff I think I should have. I'm going to have the stuff I really want but I'm also gonna honor my hunger and I'm gonna stop when I'm satisfied because everything is available. You know, if you get, if you have your first serving of the meal and you're full, you stop, but then remind yourself, hey, that's available later too. I can have that later as well. So then maybe you won't have these massive portions because you're afraid um, or you're telling yourself like, that's it. Once it's gone, it's gone. If you're constantly telling yourself that, I promise you from experience, uh, from personal experience and from professional experience that that just revs up the intensity to want it even more. So what if we tried the opposite? Penny said, looking forward to testing out the, testing this out this weekend. I am looking forward to hearing how that goes. Wendy said, I really love this philosophy. I'm glad you think so. Hey, Janice, I'm glad to see you're popping on. That's awesome. If you are just jumping in and you've kind of missed the first bit, I would encourage you, and this goes for anyone, I would encourage you to watch the replay, which will come on after this live. Um, but yes, awesome. Cool. Let me know what you guys think of this suggestion. Now, these are the three tips I wanted to share with you guys today. And if you're out of time, you know, feel free to hop off. Um, but I will take a few minutes to answer some questions that have either come in or some questions that you guys might have now. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on them um, or comment them below and I will do my best to answer them here now. Um, the one question that I had coming in 
was Christina had asked me, she said, I'm nervous about my parents' Thanksgiving next weekend. Actually, the meal they cook, it is insanely salty. We are from Newfoundland. So besides not loading up on my plate, what's a good way to help with the salt? So this kind of goes to my first tip. You know, you may not be able to control the food. Um, you may not be able to control the salt intake. Um, I don't think if you asked your parents to change the recipe that would go over very well but what you can maybe do is add something that you feel happy with that kind of counterbalances some of those foods that you know are going to be super heavy and super rich so you know maybe like we were talking about before some kind of big green salad that might be really beneficial to have in addition to something that is quite sal uh, salty it will help process that food a bit better um, it won't be then such a massive volume of that heavy food. So yeah, my best suggestion would to bring bring something that would add to that meal, um, but still allow you to enjoy it. Um, and then also too, anytime you, anytime you have really salty food, you want to make sure that you're continuing to hydrate to kind of flush some of that salt out and to just keep it moving. Um, when we've had a really salty meal, we tend to bloat a bit. And so by allowing some of that hydration and that fluid kind of prevents that from sticking and allows us just to flush it out. So that is my tip for there. Um, let me know, guys, if you have any questions, I'm just going to check here and see. Penny said, if I can't finish what I took on my plate, I always feel obligated to finish it because someone made it and I struggle throwing out what I can't eat. I think a lot of people struggle with that. And if you know that going into a meal, my suggestion would be to start with small portions. Under portion yourself, remember, because everything is available. Under portion yourself so that you don't feel obligated to like stuff your face with all of the leftovers even beyond um, what you're hungry for. So under portion yourself initially and remind yourself that you can always go back for your favorites. Um, think about the meal in advance. Are there specific things that you love more than others? So like for me, I'm not a huge mashed potato fan. It's okay, but I don't need a massive pile of it. So I'm gonna go into my meal thinking like, Jen, don't just fill up on the potatoes just because they're there. Maybe I'll take a smaller portion of that because I know I'll probably leave some on my plate or in the past I've left something on my plate. So two tips there is to portion less in the beginning and remind yourself that you can go back and two, kind of pre-plan in your head what things you might really want to eat and what things you might just be loading up on just because they're there. And then you can kind of strategize around what would be the best approach for that so that you don't feel guilty if you're full and there's still stuff on your plate. Let me know if that makes sense. Especially in front of them, Penny. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't think you'll offend people by taking smaller portions. And if anything, if you do decide you want to take seconds, they'll perceive that as a good thing. Um, and instead of, you know, stopping halfway, being full and then throwing out the rest of the food, which may not be perceived well. So just something to think about with that. Let me know, guys, if you have any other questions. I'm happy to answer them. I am here for you. As I said, I will post a link for the Thanksgiving cheat sheet in case you missed it or you have not seen it, which will include an additional five tips. So it'll include the three tips that I've elaborated on today, but it will also include an additional five. So if you thought these three were beneficial, then please be sure to check that out, share it with, with whoever you want. It is there for your benefit. Um, I would love to hear how this live has benefited you and if you've taken something away from it. And if you'd be interested in me putting on more, because that is what I'm here for you guys, your success. So please let me know how I can help you better. I'm gonna just wait a few more minutes to check those comments to see if anything else comes in. I would encourage you if you have just hopped on and you're like, what on earth is going on? please go back and watch the live when it will be posted as soon as I hop off um, because I really do think that you will find it beneficial. I missed the first half. Did you cover dessert, Deanna said. Dessert kind of would go in with all of the tips that I had. So more specifically, probably the third one. Um, so Deanna, the third tip that I talked about was, let me just go back, I'll show you. Ooh, this one. So Deanna, my third tip, and this is probably where dessert would fit in the best, is to give yourself permission to enjoy, um, both from personal and professional 
um, experience, the thing that leads people to just like completely blow out eating, to eat everything and anything in sight is those ultimatum words. So like, no, you can't have it. No, you shouldn't have it. Um, no, you won't have this like ultimatum words that make it really intense, make it really rigid. It's going to create feelings of like FOMO and at any time it's in human nature that if we're told yes, or sorry, if we're told no, our action is going to be yes. It's just this inner rebellion within ourselves. So if we can approach Thanksgiving knowing all food is available, nothing is off the table, um, then maybe you'll eat more of what you prefer. So if it's dessert that you prefer, maybe you'll have a smaller meal and you'll have more dessert. Um, but ultimately, you know, Thanksgiving, it happens once a year and it's better to just enjoy it. Give yourself permission to have those favorites instead of going in saying, I cannot have this, I won't have this. Um, and approach it that way. Let me look at questions. Penny said really good info and good timing before the holiday. Yes, I literally had this idea on Monday <clears throat> or sometime last week and I was like, I feel like this would be beneficial. And so I'm glad to hear that it was a timely thing for you. Jenna said, what is your favorite guilt-free pumpkin or dessert? Um, I think any dessert can be guilt-free. If I'm being quite honest, I think that's a mentality thing. So if you love pumpkin pie, just choose to have the pumpkin pie and not be guilty about it, right? If you have it once a year, is it really worth it to be so crazy hard on yourself and to beat yourself up about it? Or is it just worth it to have the pie? Let it satisfy you. Let it fulfill that craving, that desire. You might even stop uh, without finishing all of it because you realize you satisfied that craving and then just move on. That's my best advice, to be honest. Wendy said, I love the info. I'm so glad. I will wait like one more minute. Any other questions, come in, and then I will hop off. But I hope all of you guys have a really wonderful Thanksgiving, whatever you're doing. Ours is gonna be on Sunday. I have found a place within Australia that makes pumpkin pies and I have ordered it. So that's cool and exciting. Yeah, I hope this Thanksgiving that you have a little bit of a different approach to maybe than what you have done in the past. Cool guys, there's no other questions. If you do have them, please, whether you're watching the replay or live, ask away. I'll check back with the comments once this is reposted and I can answer those questions there. But have a wonderful weekend with your family, with your friends, whoever you are spending the time with. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. And I'm gonna pop off. Stephanie said, great ways to change my thinking. And sometimes that's all it is, guys, is changing the way we think about things. So that is what I'm here for, to help you make that shift. Alrighty guys, I'm popping off. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we'll be in touch. Bye for now.